Hello guys, this is Apex Terni here, coming with my first video on the Team Apex TCG channel. Uh, this one, uh, there will be an updated Monarch deck profile for the deck I previously uh, uploaded here. So let's get started. Um, the main boss monster of the deck, of course, is uh, always Aether, the Heavenly Monarch, along with Erebus, the Underworld Monarch. Uh, these two <clears throat> are the heavy beaters, they're level 8, but that doesn't matter, you will most likely summon them with only one tribute. Uh, you will see later if you don't know the deck. Um, and they have very good effects. The, the best monsters of the deck, pretty much. Uh, kind of a tech uh, monarch card is um, Mobius the Mega Monarch. Uh, I think he's pretty good, he can destroy spell and traps, and just as the other level 8s, he will not be uh, for, a, for a big cost. Next we have the level 6 monarchs which are two Caius and one Kuraz. Um, so Caius is here for the dark engine of the deck, you will see uh, sometime later. And uh, Kuraz, well, you all, you all know the effect, he has a very good effect, uh, which uh, is in really good synergy with uh, uh, this card, the Heavenly Squire. Um, you destroy it, it's uh, like... Uh, you, you do not need it uh, most of the times so and you draw extra cards. The draw power of the deck um, <clears throat> is uh, pretty amazing if you ask me. Then we have the two fiends. They're mandatory uh, to the deck. They uh, kind of make the consistency not very good, but of course you will need the effects in today's meta, these effects to win the games. So next we have the tribute fathers. Um, <clears throat> the two squires, uh, you will want to open up with this in your hand or something to search for it uh, to make your plays. It's like uh, the best open you, you will have if you open this card. And of course you don't want to open with this card. This card in your hand is like dead. Um, yeah, three. Ah, I want to mention the ratio of three. Both of them are at three. Uh, the reason is Mainly, um, I want to see them as many times as possible in my hand, of course this one. And um, I don't have many more tribute folders, so yeah, I don't run any other engine. Because I know some Monarch decks run different engines for the tribute folders. I don't run any, any, um, any engine, so this one is the best I can have. Next we have the Battle Fader. One more kind of tech card. Well... <laughs> If a uh, European um, championship contestant plays, we, plays this card and wins, then why not to play in my Monarch deck? Uh, so this is it for the monsters. And uh, as you can see, there is a, quite a good variety of levels. This is for the final spell card of the deck. Um, the standard Monarch spell cards are, of course, Domain and Tenacity of the Monarchs. Uh, tenacity is your search card. You can search for any, um, any spell card you want in the deck or trap. Uh, and Domain is the go-to win card of the deck. Domain of the True Monarchs literally does uh, everything in the deck. It boosts your monster's attack points, it makes them uh, lower level so, to, so as to be able to summon them very, very easily. Uh, it locks your opponent, that's the best part of it. And the reason it is a 3 in the deck. And uh, you always want to have this in your field uh, spell zone. And of course, uh, the only drawback is that you will not have an extra deck, but that is like a very small cost to pay for the card. Uh, next we have the doubles, which is March of the Monarchs and Return of the Monarchs. I really like them at two. I don't find them cloggy or anything. Uh, you will send them to the graveyard if you really don't want them, um, like very easily. 
and uh, March of the Monarchs has won me uh, so many games in the locals or even regionals. Uh, it's a very trustworthy card, trust me. Um, the final Monarch card, spell card of the deck is the Pantheism of the Monarchs. Too bad. Ah, oh, and the Monarch Stormforce. Too bad these two cards are heated in the are hit in the list. Uh, all Monarch players want uh, them to come back at three. I don't think this will happen for the next two years. But if they come back, this deck is gonna be like not meta, but one of the top decks, I think. Next up. For the other spell cards, we have Triple, a lot of Darkness. You have many Dark monsters in your deck, like Battle Fader. That's the best fodder for it. Um, some the the Underworld Squire. You can uh, discard it, it, it in your hand. Is like completely waste. In some very bad situations, you can even discard Vanity's Fiend if you really want to draw something. It's like really really good card and adds the consistency of the deck. Just as reinforcement of the army and terraforming, you want to search for the best cards and terraforming searches for the main reinforcements, uh, searches for the heavenly squire. So the best two cards of the deck are really uh, reliably in your hand most of the times. Upstart goblin to add more consistency and the tech spell card of the deck is reasoning. Now, I chose this card over something else like One for One or some other Monarch Spell Trap, Spell or Trap card because uh, I saw the different levels of the Monarchs uh, and the small ones, of course, the big ones and the Squires. And uh, I thought that my opponents would have a very hard time guessing what's the top Monarch of the deck. Of course, you can have the combo with Kuraz. She can be special summoned by this and then you will have the effect. You will have the effect of Kuraz with uh, Aether as well. So yeah, that's a really good tech card and uh, most of the times I, I use it... Well, I, I don't use it very often because it's not searchable like the rest of the deck. But the times I use it, uh, it is for the best. I. I have a very good time using it um, and it adds to the fun of the deck because this this deck now is mostly a fun deck well not for the opponents um, the final cards of the deck are the trap cards I only use the prime monarch three times and the monarch erupt uh, not a lot of monarch players use the monarch erupt I think it's a very good card like uh, I have a feeling that one Vanity's Fiend is not enough and you want to negate the opponent's effects as much as possible. The Monarch's Erupt gives you the best opportunity to do so. Um, and of course, it will stay on the field even if your Monarchs are wiped out by a Regeki or anything. It will stay for another turn and will wait for you to place another Monarch and not go out of the field. And the Prime Monarch is like, it combos with every single card of the deck. It can uh, place the very important spells back to your hand uh, by the effect of the Heavenly Squire comboed with this. It can help as a tribute fodder and it has a very neat effect uh, if you have it on the field, which you do not use very often, but trust me, it will come very, very good. Uh, of course, with combination with this card, sometimes in the matches. Uh, as I said earlier, we do not have an extra deck that would completely ruin the basic concept of the deck. Uh, but uh, the list of the side deck is right over there. You can see it in the list. Uh, I could not find really the time um, with the consistent schedule of the uploading videos uh, to to be ready for the side deck, but here you can see it. And um, this is pretty much the deck. Most of the times you want to uh, open with a monster like these three and possibly lock your opponent out of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Like most of the 
the meta decks do these days. Um, the deck is really, really good uh, in the in the following turns, turns two through eight, nine or ten, uh, whenever the game lasts. It's a uh, it's a deck that can hold on uh, to threats and generally uh, compete very well, mostly with some lower tier decks. But with higher tiers, it can have a pretty good matchup as well uh, if you get lucky in the first turns. So that is it for the deck. I hope you enjoyed and uh, I wish you a very good day. Bye guys!